Hey guys, this is Ken here. I would like to welcome you to the Turbo Editors Podcast. This is going to be episode number 42. Today is March the 26th, 2016, Saturday, uh, day before Easter. So I hope everyone is having a wonderful and a beautiful Easter weekend. It has been wet here today. It was storming this morning and I think it's going to be a repeat for tomorrow. So if you celebrate Easter, I do, and I appreciate the Lord and everything that he's done for me. I'm not ashamed to say so. Uh, I say it with great joy, and I am so thankful for the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and that I can take part in all. So, welcome again to the podcast, and bless you all. What are we going to talk about on this podcast? Just a little bit of everything. Um, there at one time, I had lost just about all of my knitting mojo. Um, I just, I was making myself knit or crochet and I would get it back a little bit and it would kind of wane off and it was just back and forth and back and forth. But I really think that I have my mojo back. And I thought at one time that I was going to kind of cease on the podcast a little bit. Uh, because I have really gotten into cross-stitching and enjoying it. And I enjoy all my crafts. So, but I, <laughs> it's like I've got so many uh, irons in the fire, so to speak, that I said something has got to give a little bit and it's just really getting your priorities straight and um, trying to find out the right uh, pattern to go by and time management is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to get there and until I do I'm going to enjoy all my crafts and when I have time to do something if I feel like cross stitching I cross stitch if I feel like knitting, I knit, and uh, I have been knitting again, and uh, sewing. Sewing has kind of not been that much, but my sewing machine is just wanting to act up, so I really need to get it to a dealer and let them look at it and find out what's going on. My stitches are, it's a tension problem somewhere, and I don't know what it is, but we'll get there. So we're going to talk about um, knitting, crocheting, and spinning in this podcast. But I would like to say this before we go any further. We had, I've been in EMS for a long time. Uh, going close to 30 years. And when I had my heart attack here a few weeks back, the helicopter crew that come and flew me to Mobile, that company had a crash last night after they had responded to a call and picked the patient up, and there are no survivors. The paramedic that was on board was the paramedic that took care of me and flew me when I had my heart attack. And at the very top of his profession and my heart and my prayers goes out to the families and the companies and all of my working friends so yeah keep these families in your prayers they really need it today it was a total of four lives it was the pilot the paramedic the rn and the patient no survivors yeah. Okay, getting back on track. I think I'm going to start with um, the spinning. And because I want to give a great big shout out to a wonderful lady who I call my friend and I just think the world of her. I look forward to one day being able to meet you, Juanita, and sit down and spin and talk and share our crafts and she blessed me with some fiber 
and I am so excited to show and to share with you this fiber and I'm going to start actually spinning this today oh and I love smelling fiber this is brown and it is so soft and I have lots and lots of this so while I'm sitting here sharing and telling you about this I have my spindle here and I said that I was going to start this on the podcast this little bit that I had left over after getting them all wound up is that I was going to go ahead and start this and this is the way I start mine I get it just a little bit going and draft it out and get it going that didn't work doesn't always work the first time right right I think I had too much uh, my fingers and this is a new experience for me because I think I'm really getting the taste of real fiber where there's is it lanolin am I saying that right that's in the fiber and you can feel it in there yeah okay let's get this going can I spin back on itself until I get it going yep uh, this is a spindle that I got recently takes a while to get it started but this is how I start spinning my fiber and I'll walk it down and get it and I spin this way so how the way you spin is the way I start my fiber That we got it going here. Put it over like that. Get it out to my way. I love this fiber. It's a brown. I'm going to get this spun, and I may experiment with plying a light uh, neutral color with this, and kind of get a like a barber pole effect or something. I don't know, but wow, this is amazing. So, yep, this is just a little bit of the fiber that I received, but I got it going. I love this little spindle. And it's spinning up good. Uh, I weighed it. I can't remember what it is, what the weight on it is. I wrote it down in my book somewhere. But this, I'll put that in there. That's some of the fiber. And that one, I have this Romney, and this is some that she dyed as well. Just take part of it out that's still braided. Wow. It's, mm, missing the braid. Get that spine. Keep that together. And some more gray. Ta-da! It's in the braid. This is going to keep me happy and joyfully spinning for a while. And this, I'm not going to take this out, but it's a lot of fiber here, folks. Juanita, love you. Thank you. Appreciate you. I am just tickled. Tickled, tickled, tickled. Love this. Thank you. And I will keep you guys up to date on my progress. I might be swinging out of frame here to get my stuff. I'm 
also working on this fiber. And I'm not going to unwind it, but this is the spindle that my homemade spindle that I'm spinning this on. And I've got a ply ball. And this is my spindle that I ply on. It's homemade and works fantastic. And this is it plied up. I don't know if you can really tell. Yep, that's it plied up. Nice fingering weight. And that's what I want to ply. Uh, I said I would like to ply that brown into a sports weight. Or, and however I spin it, if it takes three plies, four plies, whatever, to get it into a sports weight. Because I spin thin. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. But that's another thing that I'm working on. Uh, another project that I'm spinning, and I have no dates to get this done, is this fiber. I've got two more bumps. I've got two of these to go. Uh, and this is it on the spindle. I'm spinning this on a Bosworth. Uh, I won't take the time to wind it back. But also, I don't know if I show that, but a ply ball. And I think what I'm going to do when I get this one spine and get it onto this ply ball, I will ply these two together and make a skein and then ply the others. Get a skein. I'm also working on this whenever I get a chance. Um, it's the pink, and I'm sorry, I don't know the, I cannot remember the fibers on these. For some reason, I don't have any of my labels, but it's pink, and it's, I'm keeping it in the braid, and I take off what I need. It's beautiful different uh, colors of pink and a little bit of purplish grayish color in there and this is what I do I break off about this much pull it in two and I spin it that way on this so that's my spinning that's what I've got done thus far on the spinning front but it's good to be back spinning. I had let um, my spinning kind of go to the side for way too long. All right, uh, that's all that I have on spinning. And on the knitting front, I have a finished project. And it was something very new for me. And it's brioche, brioche, however you say it. But this is my first attempt at brioche. It's not something like, I love color work and I love Fair Isle color work. Fair Isle is something I know I will always be doing. Um, brioche may be something that I do whenever I see a project that I want. It's not, I want the rest of this year to be learning new techniques harder projects and just putting myself out on the line and this was definitely one of them and there's there's a lot of I don't want to say there's a lot compared to other tutorials but there are some tutorials on YouTube and some good ones and some that are just too fast uh, if you know how to brioche and you're doing a tutorial everyone is not just not pick it up like that and if you zoom through it uh i don't put too much emphasis on those videos because they're too fast for me to learn um and i go to another one and i will say oh wow what was the pattern of this hat let me find it 
let me find because the written instructions on this hat it was well written well written um, so it really got me through the most of it uh, let's see let's go to the library I hope Double Dutch is the name of the hat by Arlette. If I can get it up here, Double Dutch. Yep. And it's a well written pattern. This is the pattern that's, oh goodness. There's too big of a glare. Okay, too big. There we go. That's good. You see that? Yeah. And it's a well-written pattern. But this is mine, and I knit it out of uh, Red Heart Super Savers. I think I used a size five needle. And this is the reverse. And it fits. I love actually the way it fits. Um, yep, this one's a little bit brighter, but I like it. It's thick, it's squishy, and um, I would do this pattern again. I would do this pattern and give this pattern. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm thinking about doing this in a um, fingering weight. And it's got instructions for all the weights in the pattern. So if you're looking for an easy brioche pattern, try this out. Try the Dutch hat out. I think you just might like it. Yep. So that's the finished project, right? So what else? We could talk about a little bit more knitting. How about that? Let's talk about the Leaves of Grass shawl. Oh, and Juanita, thank you also for the DPNs. I have them in use. I'm using one now. Yay! And I also have the uh, Harmonies that she sent me also. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am... I said... This was going to be complete by the end of this month, and I think we're going to get there. It's a slow go. It has an applied border, and that's what I'm working on now, and it is extremely time-consuming. Uh, but, wow. Can I say wow. This is how much I have left to go. A little bit right there. Really doesn't look like a lot, but I kind of, that's about eight hours of work getting that done. If my calculations are right, and I love this shawl. This shawl has been a long time in the making. So let me come from this end where I've already got this done. And you can see what it's looking like. I'm going to stand. <laughs> And stretch this out. I like this part here. This, I love that pattern. And when it's blocked out, oh, it's gonna look so good. This, and that's the center of it. You can see how that looks. I love it. Mm. When this baby gets blocked out. Yeah, it just makes you go, wow. And this is my applied border. Mm -hmm. So, it's a Jared Flood pattern. And I have enjoyed this. I started this April of last year. And it's taken me just about a year to get complete. And, uh... There are other Jared Flood patterns that I'm probably going to do another one right after this one, which would be 
another long-term project. Just work on it, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there, and that's well on its way. I was hoping by the next time that I podcast that would have been complete. But it's not, but it's getting there. Uh, another thing that I'm knitting on is my Honey Bee Arch Mittens. Uh, who is this pattern by? I got all of this written down somewhere. Uh, in the Leaves of Grass, I'm knitting that. It was on US 6, 4.0 millimeter. Loops and threads, uh, yarn is what I'm using. And this I'm going to show you now is my Hey Biatch Mittens by Drunk Girl Designs. The yarn that I'm using, the green, is a premier, no it's not, it's Knit Picks. It's a Knit, it's a knit Picks yarn. And this is a lovely hand spun that was gifted to me by Juanita. She spins, and Juanita, I love it, love it, love it. And this is the honeycomb part of the mitten. I completed, I went from about here today to there. I wanted to at least get the hand part. As you can tell, it's still missing a thumb. And this is the beauty, the magic part. Yep. Okay, B, this is the left mitten. And it fits like a mitten. Yep. I'll finish the um, watching TV tonight, probably, after we go and eat supper and come back. Yep. So, got a lot done on this today. And uh, my, I, I'm going to look for some more, uh, I don't, it's not going to be mittens, probably a hat or, I'm thinking about even getting uh, a pattern going with Fair Isle so that I can stick. I want to stick. I have not done anything where you stick, so I think that's going to be. An upcoming project for me. Another thing that I'm working on that I have not worked on since we talked last is, and it's really no need for me to even get it out, is um, the scrappy blanket that I'm working on. I have not done any more on it. The knotty gloves that I said probably was not going to do, that it was going to be a scrap, but I think after seeing some of the completed objects and the threads is yeah i'm going to keep it keep it keep it a go so it will come back into my rotation so that's pretty much it for the knitting for the crocheting what i've been crocheting on and get some more colors on this tonight as I am doing a corner to corner blanket crochet out of Red Heart Super Savers because I have lots of it back there and I want some of it to go so I can get some more right and I'm doing it in a rainbow color is that not showing out on camera yes okay color the route I'm going is red and why you do not see red down here is because I'm going to border this in red red orange yellow green blue purple red and I'll start back and keep going until I get to the end and I love how that's looking on camera and I'm going to make this for a probably a double size queen size bed yep spread yep i think i will and i 
love how that's turning out and it's quick I mean it's it's a fast go I'm doing the orange I may have to get some more of the colors but I also have my ugly granny square blanket going I haven't done any more on that I need to play catch up on that and also the autism awareness blanket that I'm doing I haven't done any work on it not enough to show anyway hopefully I'll get those out and do a little bit more work on them in my next recording and you'll get to see that oh also yeah I'm probably gonna work on some of these tonight because I saw who was it wow you know I'm gonna have to go back and find something because I want you guys to see and I want to give credit where credit is due right my phone is just not as fast well I may have to wait until another time because I'm not sure which posting it was under dog let me try it. one more page one more page I don't find it here if you listen very closely <laughs> Ricky a cat is laying over here and he's doing some serious snoring yes indeed he is but someone cannot remember your name finished the naughty gloves that I'm working on and I was going to show them oh, because they were beat beautiful just bear with me but while I'm looking for this Andrea I want you to know that I very much appreciate you taking and helping uh, and starting the March thread for finished projects Sometimes, you know, words just aren't enough. But I very much appreciate it, and I thank you. And I want you to send me your address because I want to send you a token of appreciation. Um, Angie's Hip uh, on Ravelry, Andrea. Thank you for helping with the group. So, give me your address. Uh, I want to send you a token of appreciation. But I think I will start back working on these tonight. And you can see the cabling pattern starting there. Yep. I just ever since I've been smelling that fiber, I've been smelling my yarns. <laughs> yes. And that's in my rescue bag. I'm at 28 minutes. Okay, hurry up, Kenneth. Well, that's all the knitting to show. Um, that's all the projects that I'm working on. I uh, haven't done, worked anymore on the quilt. Uh, if you want to follow me with my cross-stitching, you can see that on my floss tube. Hopefully, later on tonight, I will get the floss tube part out. But I wanted to get this out. Um... I will get more uh, involved in the Ravelry boards. I'll get more involved in the group in weeks to come. Uh, but everybody that has stuck with me in the group, I want to say thank you. God bless every one of you. Uh, and I don't think that I did this at the beginning, but for all the returning viewers that have stuck with me through the times that I've been podcasting, I appreciate it, and if you're new and you're viewing this, I hope that you'll find something that will keep you coming back, uh, and it's going to get more involved. 
And as a matter of fact, I'm going to start a new thread because in April, I've not done any cows or crochet or longs, knit alongs or any of those, but I think I'm going to do one in April. Uh, and it's going to be doing something out of your comfort zone. Uh, let me write this down so I don't forget this. But if you knit and you've never crocheted, crochet something. It doesn't have to be elaborate. Just something new that you're trying, something new, whether you crochet and you don't knit, take up knitting or any crafts. Just do something that's outside of your comfort zone and post it and show it in the thread. And that's going to be a separate thread than, the, of course, the monthly uh, finished projects that I do. And, of course, there will always be gifts. All right. So everything's taken care of. I do want to talk about uh, the giveaways that I talked about last time. Um, let me get back to where I wrote some names down. And... Uh, Crazy Knitting Fool, Kristen, Polly81, Paul, and Yarning for a Smile, Kim. Okay, that was the winners that I announced, and I've heard from everyone, I've heard from all three. I have not sent any prizes out. I have, uh, hopefully, next week that my sewing will get back into the swing of things. Uh, probably it will be midweek, hopefully the first part of the week, this sewing machine will get back into gear. Uh, one problem after the others with this thing. But, uh, and I haven't been here a lot. But this upcoming week, most of this week will not be spent knitting, sewing, knitting, uh, da, 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 cross stitching or any of those things it's going to be sewing uh, because I have got a lot of bags that I've got to get made and get in the mail so as I get your bag sewn up I will get it in the mail to you and I will send you a message and let you know that it's on the way I know there are two people already that has requested the Star Wars and I can't remember if I have one or two, three. I don't know how much I've gotten over there. I've gotten some more. But I'm going to Joann's and hopefully if they've got some more Star Wars material that uh, I'll be able to pick it up and get you both a bag, a Star Wars bag. So what I'm going to do, I, I think I made a mishap. Uh, I was... I don't even know how it happened.